Jai Shri Ram, welcome to Astrology with Abhilasha. Today I am going to talk about the upcoming lunar eclipse which is happening on 26th of May. And I am making this video because this eclipse is visible in India. And it's going to happen from 2.17pm on 26th May. So, uh, the chart of the eclipse is of uh, Virgo rising. And the eclipse is happening in 3-9 axis and the sign of Scorpio and Taurus. Now, this eclipse is happening in Scorpio and Anuradha Nakshatra. So first of all, as I did in my previous Saturn transit video, I would like to talk about the sign of Scorpio and the nakshatra of Anuradha in which this uh, lunar eclipse is happening so that we can understand the foundation of this cosmic event. Without understanding the energy of the sign and nakshatra, we should not jump upon the final conclusions for each and every ascendant because there will be a foundational theme which would be same for each and every ascendant. Then we can evolve around which house this is happening for your ascendant. Okay. I wish and recommend you to listen to this part. Otherwise, I'll put down the timestamp and you can jump to your ascendant and skip this part. So let's get started with the sign of Scorpio. What does a Scorpio show? A Scorpio is a sign of divine potential. Its creative energy is all about cosmic vibrations. Now, it has come out from the materialistic garb of Libra, where the tussle started between materialism and spirituality. All right. Scorpio is a sign which indicates that you have crossed the spark of Libra and now you are seeking for some transfer, transformational events in your life. Now here you began to uh, realize the capacity of expansion in the spiritual world. Here in Scorpio, the desire of original glory of original spiritual gains of ascension starts crossing the libra stage where the divine spark is just beginning to show up we have evolved from two opposing forces uh, that is of materialism and spirituality now our soul in Scorpio wants to experience the urge to make, make and break the material uh, cage and enjoy the eternal freedom which spirituality endows on us. Several important changes take place in the basic nature of evolving the soul. That is the basic uh, trend of evolution that it is transient it is always evolving it is always changing ever changing process and without evolving nothing can survive all right now in scorpio things began to reshape there is a newer reaction which we try to understand materialism begins to weaken and that is what we can see in the surrounding currently the sheath of materialism is breaking down badly in front of our eyes 
and everyone is uh, looking up to some divine help some spiritual ascension to overcome the losses we are having due to the current scenario of this covid so this uh, energy of scorpio will increase this inward uh, attention which we are now getting engrossed into we are experiencing new powers being developed a feeling of submission may arise because also the nakshatra of anuradha is all about being submissive i'll talk about in the later part now in scorpio basic factor is craving to regain one's spiritual glory and to overcome the struggle between opposing forces of materialistic pleasure and spiritual process you uh, desire a direction in scorpio for the rebirth which can happen in sagittarius in this process you have to defeat many psychological problems and conflicts that arise as the start of new awakening is happening now our sages and uh, ascetics in the past thought it appropriate to depict them by the symbol of a scorpion now the geometrical emblem for this sign is more explicit than the visual symbol of the scorpion a scorpion appear like a big question mark or like the spinal cord and the re- resemblance of this cluster uh is very close to the outline of a scorpio both the spinal cord and the scorpion refer to the concealed power which when rightly developed give us tremendous power to overcome anything any issues which we are facing and it gives us power to travel further as i told you earlier they depict the divine potential in yogic literature the activation of kundalini is also located at the base of the spine which is known to bring about transformation traveling through the various chakras we have in our body are linked to the spinal cord it gives psychic power changes the nature of one conscious behavior now we all know reptile is a uh, scorpio is a reptile and it resides in under uh, ground holes which are secretive and mainly found in the warmer part of the uh, world so here where the uh, hidden portion of scorpio is said that a scorpio sign is about mysteries the hidden portion the black hole the abyss that how we can relate it to the insect the reptile a scorpio is scorpion is right as we all know a scorpion has a long tail it is narrow and it stings it is venomous and it is poisonous right now the serpent fire which is full of dangerous possibility if aroused um, without any proper channelizing of your body and soul and which is located at the base of the spinal cord it can 
prove very detrimental so before dabbling into the field of scorpio the sun scorpio or the eighth house we should align our inner soul and our body to absorb the kind of power it invokes in us so when an eclipse is taking in is taking place in such a powerful sign we should be doing at least some part of meditation throughout our day or a weekly ritual should be uh, you know involved in our uh, daily practices just so that we become strong mentally and physically to absorb the revelations this eclipse is going to shower on us all right now the special characteristic of the scorpion is that the male scorpion on finding female engages itself in a kind of primitive courtship consisting of uh, grasping the hands of female and etc lot of things and copulation also the male is often attacked by the female and devoured unless he manages to escape whether we consider the scorpion or the emblem of scorpio we find ourselves in the realm of the occult now once we start the journey of occultism it grabs us and the initial stage is all about we tussling that do we want to uh, go deeper into the science or just want to run away from it because it is revealing to us uh the untold we are getting uh, we are having a face off with ourselves while dabbling into the power of of the eighth house and the scorpio so that is how it is depicted by the copulation of a male and female scorpion that you can't resist it and you can't get engrossed in it totally you have to find a balance because after all we are living in a materialistic world so we have to demark a point that how far we are going to get into this so this is a very crucial eclipse for the people who wants to dabble in the field in the uh, um, purview of 8000 scorpio who want to a uh, dabble into these sciences who want to awaken their inner consciousness etc right this is a very fructifying time for them whenever we come across the symbol of a deep opening in the earth a cavity a hiding place or a hole there is a reference of the mystic power concealed in every human individual the energy dwe- dwelling in scorpio is like a cavity and a base the mythology which is attached to scorpio is of vasuki the serpent naga who was used in the churning of cosmic ocean now scorpio has a definitive part in the cosmic churning from which the good and the bad emerges out equally that's why we say whenever we are dabbling with the energy of the 8th house we should be ready to absorb both the good and ignore the bad all right that is Uh, the power we need uh, if we want to dabble into the energy of scorpio because in the churning of the ocean uh, there was good things and even the poison was there so you have to be very aware of this all right so this is all about the sign of scorpio sign of scorpio is the interaction between the yin and the yang the good and the bad the prime objective of this churning process was to 
obtain the divine nectar of immortality the total process of ocean churning of this cosmic churning is to uh, give ourselves a sense of immortality by the way of a spirituality now this is very symbolic all right we should understand how can we imbibe the symbology in our life leaving about whatever is negative and absorbing and carrying only what is positive that is what should happen during this process of the eclipse which is taking in the sign of scorpio so now i'll be discussing uh the nakshatra of uh, anuradha talking about anuradha in which this lunar eclipse is happening anuradha and the nakshatra falls in scorpio now this nakshatra is ruled by saturn but it lies in scorpio which is ruled by mars there is a great turmoil which is happening in anuradha as mars and saturn are inimical planets towards each other one being fiery and the other being cold now there are attribute of tamas and it's a secondary attribute is of sattva and harmony tamas and sattva do not vibrate at the same wavelength there is a friction between the two gunas tattvas right the astrological symbol assigned to anuradha is a lotus flower and the vedic deity which presides over this nakshatra is mitra now mitra in rigveda is addressed as the power that brings people together now how beautifully this line describes uh, the current state of the world right i hope you can relate what i am trying to say now mitra is the deity of friendliness and cooperation among men so that is what is happening so crucially right now in the current state of world everyone is seeking cooperation and we are also somewhere experiencing the dearth of it so this nakshatra of anuradha and the deity mitra which mitra in hindi is a hindi word which also can be translated as a friend so this is uh, the theme of anuradha which is getting explained in the current scenario that we are uh, being provoked or being awake from the sleepiness of our uh, you know selfishness and now this nakshatra is providing us a platform to become a better human to become friendly towards our co humans so this is the theme which we can currently see and the eclipse is also happening in this nakshatra itself so it is of great importance mitra as the light of the day is worshiped along with varuna the light of the night now this mitra watches over mother earth it is the benevolent influence of mitra that our efforts succeed and the secret powers begin to open and come out mitra as the light of the day is the ruler of the dawn so somewhere we can see a dawn like situation happening in the current state of affair the problems we are engaged into i am very hopeful that things will change after the coming week at the dawn a new
new life starts and we are there to yield the karma of past now scorpio falls in the 8th house of the kal purush kundali and here is where the nakshatra of anuradha is found anuradha is totally striving to remove the veil of ignorance and uncover our central core to show what is hidden within us as i told you the total energy of scorpio the total energy of aduradha is to give us a face off and show us our inner demons it is here to divulge the complete truth by the way of awareness growing understanding empathy friendliness union with the universal energy and uh, we should understand that whatever takes place in scorpio on the nakshatra of anuradha is not a smooth process it is full of turmoil and conflict so even if in your charts you want to understand the energy of your 8th house a planet sitting in an 8th house or a planet sitting in scorpio or if you are in a scorpio ascendant a uh, smoothness you should forget about it your life is all about turmoil a uh, transformation rebirth kind of a scenario in that specific part of your life wherever scorpio falls right and whichever uh, planet is sitting in scorpio the signification of those planets now here moon is falling in anuradha and the sign of scorpio during this eclipse so this all of this is going to happen on the level of our mental planes the mentality the emotions are going to change and it will not be a smooth transition all right it would be uh, taking us breaking us and then making us it is like uncovering of our souls in some cases it may give pleasant experiences and enable the individual to recover his uh base his foundation while for others it can be heart rendering pain but the goal eventually is same that is the revelation of our inner soul getting connected to the cosmic uh iron which is inside us either way it will take us to Uh, or it will make us feel deflected from the materialistic pleasures in our life either way this is going to happen and this is happening we are understanding the real worth of compassion empathy rather than just running after materialistic gains now anuradha as the name itself suggests if i break it in anu radha then anu means the small and radha is the consort of shri krishna it can also mean the follower of radha radha is in one sense a small flash of spark anuradha implies a small sparkle of fragment of lighting representing our inner desire to reach to the universal womb anuradha makes us urge to unite with the divine power once again Radha is the beloved of Lord Krishna. Radha is deeply attached to Krishna and stands for the same relationship uh towards all the material all the human beings in the society. It teaches us that we are part of the society, the Vasudev Kutumbakam 
theme is very prominent here. She, Radha, is physically separate from Krishna, but psychologically and in the essence, what is called love is with Krishna every moment. This made her the great devotee to the Lord. Though she had to suffer on the account of this affection, but under Aduradha, the deep psychological urge to getting back to the original source is very high. Individual is made to feel as a fragment of the complete divine supreme power. We get to understand in this current scenario that we are just a power, a particle of the complete cosmic theme. And we should overcome the selfish urge of gathering everything for ourselves, rather we should understand the joy of distributing and giving. As I told you earlier, the astrological symbol of Anuradha is a flower of lotus. And in Sanskrit, lotus is also known as Padma. Lotus uh, can also signify Lakshmi, who is the consort of Vishnu. And Radha and Krishna is just a form of Lakshmi and Vishnu. The flower of Lotus contains within itself the entire creative process. It mystically reflects the various stages of cosmic evolution. Someday, in some video, I will describe the complete uh, importance of the flower of lotus, the water droplets on it, what does it signify and shows why this particular symbol is so important in our uh, rituals, in our uh, epicology, mythology, etc. Why it is given such an importance why each and every deity is generally seen seated on the flower of lotus. What kind of detachment actually we denote uh, this flower to prosperity, luxury, Sri Lakshmi, etc. But in cruel sense, the flower of lotus shows detachment, just like the drop of water is always slippery on the petal of a lotus flower, that is how should we be staying in the materialistic world. There, engrossed, but always detached. Neither too happy in the good times, neither too sad or overwhelmed in the bad times. Always maintaining the balance. And the sense of detachment should be driving us. Now, lotus also stands for manifestations. Lotus grows from the mud, symbol of the deepest level of materiality, equivalent to the unpleasant smelling of the mud. Now, this is how we can understand Anuradha as a nakshatra. It is uh, about emotional purity. So this is a very good time to purify ourselves on the emotional level. During this eclipse, the best kind of meditation I would suggest you during this eclipse is just to let go all the negativity and all the negative emotions you've been holding since ages. Just let your mental plane clear itself of every doubt, every fear you have while dabbling into the darkness of Scorpio. 
delve into it face the darkness to reach the light that is what the theme of this eclipse should be bringing to your life and this is a foundational uh, intro which i have created for everybody and i hope it helps you understand that what this lunar eclipse is demanding out of you now while going through each and every ascendant when i'll be placing the sign of scorpio in your houses for different ascendant you can now easily relate that that house is desiring this basic need from you of evolving out of reaching out to your co-humans to your family to your friends on an emotional level on an emotional plane rather than just supporting them materialistically be available for your family and friends and your co-human beings on the emotional plane that is where this lunar eclipse will unfold itself onto you and that is how you can gather the strength to sail through it all right now the next part will be uh, the result of this eclipse for each and every ascendant 